Sea otters have to be one of the most adorable creatures on the planet, especially their pups. But as well as being cute, they are also environmental engineers, changing the environment they live in for the better. They are known as keystone species. A keystone species is a species that has a disproportionately large effect on its natural environment relative to its abundance. Southern sea otters, along with other types of sea otter, were hunted for their fur to near extinction in the 19th century. At one point it was thought that they were extinct, but then a small population of around 50 was discovered. They are now protected and due to conservation efforts number around 3,000, but their numbers have plateaued and their range is restricted to a 300 mile stretch of the central coast of California from around Santa Cruz to Santa Barbara. They are listed by the IUCN as endangered. At Monterey Bay Aquarium they have rescued sea otters and they have, for years, been doing a very important job. The females have been surrogate mothers to rescued pups. How amazing is that? These pups have become separated from their mothers at a very early age and are found suffering from symptoms such as dehydration, hypothermia and or hypoglycemia. They don't tend to be suffering from injury or chronic disease and with some love and care can make a full recovery. They have become separated from their mothers, possibly due to the mother dying or because she was in poor health or inexperienced or they got separated in a storm. These pups are very young, typically being less than eight weeks old. As well as making the pups healthy again, they need to be taught the life skills needed for them to successfully return to the wild. And this is where the surrogate mothers come in. Since 1984, the Sea Otter Research and Conservation Program based at Monterey Bay Aquarium have been treating stranded newborn sea otter pups. The methods used to care for these pups relied heavily on humans. Unfortunately, these methods meant that it was difficult for the pups to survive being reintroduced into the wild. From 1986 until 2000, it was noted that 67% of the releases were unsuccessful. This was due to failures of the young otters to reintegrate with the wild population and to avoid interactions with humans. Unfortunately, these otters had to be recaptured and stay in captivity permanently. The Sea Otter Research and Conservation Programme decided to try a different approach and in 2001 paired stranded pups with two captive females. These remarkable surrogate mums had themselves been stranded ashore showing signs of illness or injury. Unfortunately, after they had recovered, it was decided that they would not fare well in the wild and embarked upon a life in captivity. Having shown maternal behaviour, it was decided to try and pair them with pups. Both of them accepted and bonded with pups, sometimes just after one introduction, or it may have taken several introductions during the course of a week, but they've never rejected a pup. The beauty of this strategy of rearing the pups is that interactions with humans are limited. The surrogate mothers did an amazing job and continue to do so. They provide tactile stimulation while grooming and nurturing the pup. They share food and demonstrate different feeding methods, such as using rocks as tools to crack open a bivalve or how to tackle a wriggly crab. These adopted pups developed foraging skills at an earlier age than when humans cared for them and have been able to reintegrate successfully into wild populations of sea otters and avoid interactions with humans. The pups were released in a place called Elkhorn Slough, a place that we, as a family, have had the privilege to visit. It is a coastal estuary which runs into Monterey Bay and has 12 kilometres squared of tidal wetland. It already contained a small sea otter population and has abundant food, namely crabs, for them to eat. It doesn't have kelp, which is what one normally associates with sea otters, but has seagrass. Scientists have been monitoring the population of otters at Elkhorn Slough and having released 37 between 2002 and 2015, they have enough data to look at the impact the surrogate program has had. Surrogate raised pups show a rate of success at re-acclimating to the wild with an 80 to 88% annual survival rate compared to 27% for those which have been reared by humans. And they have also been successful at breeding and weaning. The females have become super mums in their own right. 
the pups released have surgically implanted VHF radio transmitters to enable them to be monitored and also coloured flipper tags for visual monitoring. They were monitored every day for the first two weeks after release. If they were having problems foraging, as indicated by a deteriorating body condition or a decrease in energy levels, or showed signs of elevated stress, such as vocalising or pacing, they were recaptured until they were healthy again and then re-released. Most juveniles needed at least one recapture before transitioning successfully into the wild. Scientists have concluded that using this surrogacy method has enabled juvenile sea otters to be successfully introduced into the wild with survival and reproductive rates similar to the native population. In fact, the surrogate reared otters and their wild offspring now represent over half the population of elkhorn slough. The wonderful thing is that the seagrass cover has increased and the health of the ecosystem has dramatically improved. The sea otters eat a lot of crabs, which dramatically reduce the number and size of the crab. These crabs prey upon grazing invertebrates such as sea slugs and a crustacean called Idotea. These invertebrates feed on the algae which grows on the leaves of the seagrass. With less crabs there are more invertebrates and so less algae is able to grow on the leaves, keeping them clean and healthy. Seagrasses are an important nursery habitat for juvenile fish, and seabeds along the west coast are especially important for species such as Pacific herring, halibut and salmon. They also protect shorelines from storms and waves, and they are an effective carbon sink. Sea otters have a similar effect on kelp forests. It is well documented that sea otters keep kelp forests healthy and promote their growth as they eat sea urchins which graze upon the kelp and kill it. A video for another time perhaps. The fact that the health of the whole ecosystem at Elkhorn Slough has improved so dramatically due to the growth of a population of sea otters is very exciting. And it is all down to those amazing surrogate mothers at Monterey Bay Aquarium. Sea otters like Selka, who was found stranded at only one week old in July 2012. She was taken to Monterey Bay Aquarium and raised by a surrogate mother called Rosa, who has raised the greatest number of surrogate pups. Selka was released back into the wild, but found a couple of weeks later suffering from severe shark bite injuries. After extensive surgery and rehabilitation, she was once more released back into the wild. But after several months, she was brought back to the aquarium due to concerns about her health and several interactions with people, which means she was deemed unreleasable by the US Fish and Wildlife Service. She then spent two years at Long Marine Lab, where she helped researchers understand how wild sea otters search for and acquire enough prey to survive their ocean home. In August 2016, she joined the sea otters at Monterey Bay Aquarium and has proven herself to be a successful surrogate mother. Well done, Selka. If you have enjoyed this video, then please like, subscribe and share with your like-minded friends. And don't forget to put your notifications on.